Good morning, Honorable Prime Minister. Good morning, Honorable Minister, and good morning, everyone. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, PNG Corps for providing SMEC uh, with the opportunity to present in this uh, conference. So we are actually the consultant, export consultant, so thanks for giving space to the consultant in this presentation. So the presentation was supposed to be made by Mr. Tilak Vatrai, who is a regional lead for Dams and Hydro for Pacific. He could not make it today because of some personal emergency, and I'm presenting on his behalf. So I'd like to acknowledge our valuable client for allowing us to use their project database for this presentation. So let me talk briefly about SMEC. So SMEC is one of the global leading engineering consulting firm in the space of infrastructure and energy. So we are operating in PNG since 1976, contributing in a lot of infrastructure, energy, water, transmission line projects. And in the sector of hydropower, we are among the top five engineering firms in the world, and we are contributing a lot in PNG in hydro sector. So let me start with my presentation. So today, the presentation is focused on how the growing energy demand of PNG can be met with, like, how we can meet that with hydropower. So can PNG meet that with hydropower or not? And if so, how? So we all know that all of you might have attended a lot of sessions in the last two, three days, and we all know that there are big things coming up, like in, in, in the sector of mining, in the sector of petroleum, and we have heard a lot in the last two, three years regarding SEZ. There's a lot of things going on in background in SEZ, and all of them need power. So there's no doubt that there is a huge demand for power. So if anybody in the room says that or disagree on that, they can raise their hand. But I don't think anyone disagree on that. So now with the accepted fact that there is a demand in the power, so now the question is, are we ready? Are we ready with the plan to meet that demand? And the question would be incomplete now in the today's world without saying, renewable energy. So are we ready with renewable energy? So, and let's see if PNG can do this with hydro projects or not. So this is just the electricity generation status of PNG. So more than 40%. Uh, so now with the addition of three hydro projects uh, since 2021, so it might have gone up to 40 to 50%. So 40 to 50% of the energy is like contributed by the renewable energy. And out of like renewable energy, like 80, more than 80% is like contributed by the hydropower projects in the country. So let's start with why hydropower. So before I talk, let the old hydro projects talk what they are saying. Let's see what they are saying. So if you see on the screen, this is a lower Bayun hydropower project, 3.5 megawatt. It's in operation since 90 years, 9090 years. And if you see, the PNG Forest product is investing one after another in the hydro projects. This itself is sufficient to say that PNG has a lot of and huge potential for hydro projects. And if you see the Ramu Hydro, like it's sitting over there, like uh, it's operating since last 50 years. I just want to like, sorry. I just want to like say, if, like, if the decision maker at that time, let's say for Ramu Hydro, it's a complex project with the underground powerhouse, underground caverns, if the decision maker at that time might have canceled this project, just saying that it is capital intensive, it's time taking, or it has a geological roots or geological risks. Imagine what would have been the situation today. Even for rehabilitating this project, we are struggling how to meet the like energy demand just during the short, short duration of the rehabilitation. So imagine that scenario. So uh, thanks to the decision maker at that time who decided to build all this hydro ramu. Rauna, Paunda, Warangwe. So approximately 250 megawatt out of 330 megawatt of the hydro were built in 90s. So there has not been a lot of development in this period, in this gap in the hydropower sector. But now, like even the government, National Energy Authority, PNG Power Limited, IPPs, they are like putting a lot of effort in 
planning for the hydropower projects and MTDP4 target 700 megawatt. So now let's, let's do a quick mathematics. Uh, so all of you might have been tied with your eyes looking at the presentation. So you can close your eyes and just do a quick mathematics. So if in case these all hydropower projects were not built, and today if we were supposed to supply that power with diesel, diesel plant, let's say, what would have been the like, uh, impact? Let's see. Approximately for producing one kilowatt hour of energy from diesel plant, it's around 0 0.3 to 0.4 liter of diesel. So it depends on the efficiency of the plant as well. And we know the price of diesel in, in Port Moresby is around four to five, but it might be quite expensive if, if we need to go to, let's say, Wavag or Wivac, where we need to transport inland. So with that, let's do the calculation and see, like we would have, like PNG power would like have to spend another 1.3 to 1.5 billion kina a year if they would have to supply this free power from hydropower projects, if they have to supply it from the diesel or diesel plant. And with the addition of new hydro, it would have been around 2 to 2.5 2 billion kina. That is almost 10% of the PNG budget. Imagine a situation where PPL or the government would have to spend almost 10% of the budget in the power supply. So that's very critical. And now is uh, where the reason why we are not developing hydro is not the case that uh, we have already utilized our potential. We have, like PNG has only utilized 2% of the hydro potential in the country. Uh, so, and one of the, we have the, one of the lowest per capita energy consumption in the world, 450 kilowatt hour. So there's no any database or any detailed study done on the PNG, like overall country pro potential for the hydro projects. But a uh, few of the study says that it's around 20,000 megawatt. Out of that, 14,000 is uh, technically feasible. So now, like another thing is, hydropower can't be built anywhere. Suppose, let's say, uh, my neighboring country, I'm from Nepal, so Bangladesh can't generate hydropower, so they are purchasing it from Nepal, so it's the nature's gift. Every country is not gifted by the nature's to develop their power. So if I have traveled to like most, most of the provinces here to identify the hydro projects in the last six years, the river here in PNG speaks to me. They speak to hydropower engineers, sorry, you don't try and go to listen to them. So what they are saying is, please utilize us. We are like, our water is flowing, going to the sea, and please utilize us. And if you see it here, so I took five days, I, I, I walked for five days to go to this site, it's somewhere in Eastern Highland. Can you imagine what would be the revenue, this, this only this portion of the like, water would generate with that height? It's around 300, to six, like 500 million kina a year, and that's just going to the like sea. And we'll not, we'll, in hydropower, we're not going to consume the water, it's just heating the turbine, and the water is going back to the river again. And in the Finsafen, where we studied, we have done the energy mapping, I'll discuss on this after the few slides. So actually, just in summary, we're benefited by the nature, we have a very good rainfall and our topography supporting for the hydropower projects. So I just want to talk something technically. So let, let's compare with the Nepal, uh, uh, like my country Nepal and the, my country where I'm working in, I'm currently working in PNG, and let's compare Nepal and PNG. So if you see the PNG's, like hydrology is far better. It's one of the like, it's very standing top among the uh, different countries in the world. We have very good rainfall. When I go to the site, most of the time it's raining. The people sitting in the port mostly might not feel that. But when you go to the site, when I was working in Divune Hydro, second half of the day it was almost raining every time. So that's the advantage. Look, the best flow is very nice in PNG. Look, in Nepal, in my country, even though the best flow is not that attractive, best flow means even during the dry season, the flow is very low. In PNG, the flow is very, uh, still relatively very high. So even with that case, we are like 95%, the power is coming from hydro, and now we are exporting it to India and Bangladesh. And now PNG, when we have such a great hydrology, so, uh, 
we, we could definitely do a lot. So now in the uh, where hydropower, uh, so energy transition is a global topic now. So everyone is obliged, like uh, even the big mineral company, like uh, resource company, energy company, they have now obligation to go with uh, renewables and to reduce the carbon emission. Uh, so even the PNG is the signatory of uh, COP21 Paris Agreement. So we are saying the reducing the global temperature rise below the two degrees Celsius. So it's the cheaper in-country resource. Now I'd like to talk about energy security. It's, it's a very hot topic in today's world. I'd just like to describe this with example. This is a Pounda hydropower project in, in, uh, it's in the border of, uh, I think, Western Highland and uh, Southern Highland. So it's operating since 1983. So since 1983 to date, the power generated by this plant where the power is generated, where the turbine is rotating by the water, can you think was the power generated from this plant was affected by COVID-19? Was that affected by the, like global, this Russia-Ukraine war or any type of global crisis that has happened in between in last 50 years when this project was running? No, that's the very simple answer for energy security. Where hydropower is a, would be the advantage as an energy security for the country. So, uh, let's, uh, so uh, in comparison to other renewables, I'm not like demotivating other, other renewables, but I'm presenting on the basis of facts, because renewables is the country's gift, so we can't copy renewable from one country to another. So the country who are like very high potential on solar may not, be, may not have the same potential in like some other country. It, it, it is because like in PNC, there's, if you go to the highlands, there's like a lot of rainfall. Every second half is raining, it's cloudy. So uh, we can't compare with Australia and say like we have huge potential for solar. So it's a nature's gift, renewable is nature's gift, there's no doubt on that. So even if we compare this uh, upper biome hydropower project, uh, so this is operating since 2010 and its plant factor is 90%. And if you compare with the solar, the plant factor of solar as per IRENA report is just around 15%. And what, uh, we, like, uh, if we sell like uh, hydropower, the power is generated by the water just by diverting the water. We can't sell the water somewhere else, else and generate the revenue. But we can utilize like the power, our own gas. We can sell it somewhere where other countries are struggling with the coal and other things. We can sell the gas to other country and utilize uh, hydropower to generate electricity for PNG. So hydropower potential in PNG. Uh, sorry, I'm taking a bit long, so I have... <laughs> Uh, I'll try to finish it very short. So uh, there has not been any extensive study on the total potential of the hydropower capacity in the country. Uh, so we strongly suggest government to do this study. And we have done one uh, energy mapping for the Finsafin district in uh, like uh, Morobe province. So the district itself has 500 to 700 megawatt of hydro, hydropower capacity and which can supply power to Ramu Grid or Wafi Golfu, or even they are planning for the ACZ. So we're doing study for them for a concept study for ACZ. Uh, so the power generated within the district can be utilized for industries in, uh, like, uh, in the district. So if you see this, uh, how nature has gifted PNG is, like, if you see the elevations, within the 50 kilometer of Let's, let's say within the 50 kilometer distance, we have a highland and we have the coast. We can generate the power here and we can establish the industry and we can have a port and sell it. We don't need to, like within a very compacted area. That's the, that's the like, benefit of nature. So SMEC has done a lot of, uh, you, you might, be, uh, you might like, uh, say like there has not been the hydropower development in the country. So if we see uh, from the project construction commission, yes, there has been a few, like only few projects has been commissioned. But in the background, there has been a lot of study going on. We have been like engaged by IPPs, uh, like local level government, 
and PNG Power and a lot of other like uh, IFI funded institute. So there are a lot of projects we have studied, uh, almost 3,000 to 4,000 megawatt capacity we have already identified, though it's, it doesn't cover the whole country. So we have huge potential for the hydropower in PNG. So now the major load center on like, let's say resource projects. So we heard about a lot of resources, LNG projects coming up. So they have the obligations to go for renewables, uh, energy transition, they need to do the energy transition from their existing source of power to the renewables. So there's a huge demand, there's no doubt on that. So we have uh, uh, talked about ACZ a lot. So I, I just want to talk with a very uh, simple example. So if we uh, establish the industry and if our power source is not cheap, our product will be very costly and we can't compete that product in the global market. So to make our product competitive in the global market, our power source must be cheaper. So we must go with hydropower. So in the long run, uh, even the hydropower generated can be exported to Indonesia and Australia. So the government should come up with the policies to attract investment in the hydropower projects, incentives, uh, maybe tax-free on, uh, on some of the items in the like, renewable energy sector. So the funding models, uh, I'll just uh, discuss briefly on this. If you need to invest 100 million kina in the project, doesn't mean that the developer needs to invest 100 million kina by themselves. There's a funding model where developer, developer can, let's say, uh, have a 30% equity and bank will come. Their bank are already like welcoming the investment in renewable energy sector. So bank can do 70% and that can be paid by the project revenue within six to seven period, seven, six to seven years time. So it's very attractive from even from the investment point of view. So the conclusion, I don't want to go through it. Uh, we have already discussed. So in, in thought, we have a demand and the, as a renewable energy, the hydropower can supply power to the PNG's growing energy demand. Uh, thank you, and I just want to show you the few slides like what SMIC contribution in hydropower sector in PNG. So we have, uh, we're not uh, like coming to this conclusion, just doing some desktop study in the office. We have traveled, we have traversed to the remote jungle of PNG, walking for four or five days, uh, like uh, going to the reverse and coming up with the conclusions. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for your time.